<laughs> hey everyone, it's Kyle Wood here with Playa Sonora Realty, broker owner uh, in Rocky Point, Mexico. Uh, we're starting a new series called uh, Questions for Kyle. And that was Jolene's idea. Like our Jolene is our new uh, agent in training. <clears throat> and we thought it would be a good opportunity uh, for uh, her to gain some experience and also we're going to solicit your opinions or questions. So Jolene has a whole bunch of questions she's going to start asking me. We're just going to dive right into it. All right, Welcome, guys. Jolene. Hi. Yes, I'm Jolene, uh, future agent trained by the mentor king here in Rocky Point, Kyle Wood. Um, I was actually telling Kyle about this lately, and I really wanted to do these interviews only because uh, I am doing courses right now, the weekends for real estate, and I'm trying to learn and absorb every information. So you know, she, she goes to school online through the Irma Seal Ampi yes, organization, indeed. which is our, our uh, real estate association. It's on uh, Fridays and, and Saturdays. Saturdays. And there are some things they don't teach uh, in that class because it's in Irma Seal and we're in a different market. And uh, so there are things that she doesn't learn that she will learn with us. And Kyle's going to fill me in with everything. Mm -hmm. so, so here we go. Let's I'm get very started. excited. Okay, so yeah. let's just start with the sure. first question. <clears throat> Um, what I want to know correctly to answer my clients is um, when asked if they can own a property here in Mexico, most likely like the process of owning here. The answer is yes, you can own property if you're a non-Mexican citizen. Two different ways to own property. If you're buying in the interior of Mexico, such as Hermosillo or Mexico City, you can hold what's called Mexican fee simple. Uh, here we're in what's called the restricted zone. Uh, Jolene's going to throw up a chart of where the restricted zone is. It's right, going to be right here. Um, <laughs> where the restricted zone is located. Yeah. And within that restricted zone, you have to hold title to property in what's called a Fidi Comisio. And the Fidi Comisio is essentially a real estate bank trust. Does he need to come in? Yeah, we'll let him in. We'll Poor let guy. Him in. Disculpe. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is, uh, he's installing our fiber action. So <laughs> you'll hold it in the Fidi Comisio, which is essentially a real estate bank trust. And, um, you have a trustee bank. Uh, they act as your fiduciary. You're the beneficiary if you're the owner of the property. And then uh, you uh, named your secondary beneficiaries in case of your death. Usually they will charge, the banks will charge a uh, annual fee to manage your trust and you have all the rights and responsibilities of a Mexican citizen. No, it's good to know and good to explain because I know when you go to a different area, you're actually just not, it's not in a place that you're really knowledgeable. So you need to know all that kind of It takes, it does take a while. I had real, real estate experience in, in Arizona. So the process down here is, yeah. is much different. So understanding what the, the trust process is all about is yeah. very, very important to having a successful transaction. Exactly. Um, fun fact guys, what is your daughter's full name? Uh, my daughter's full name is Riley Parker Wood. And why Parker? And the reason why it's uh, the initial the reason why it's Riley Parker, it's for RP, which is Rocky Point. He went all in. I'm not. I'm not going to go into why. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go to the next question. Yeah. <clears throat> what would I recommend wanting to sell their home in Rocky Point, as in like documents? This is a very good question. Um, you're going to need a copy of your trust, your Fidi Comisio. You're going to need a full copy of that. And ideally, we need the certified copy that was stamped by the notario. Uh, you're going to need a copy of your electric bill, your CFE bill here in Mexico. You're also going to need a copy of your electric bill uh, in the United States. And the reason why is uh, with CFE, uh, it's owned by the government and it's considered uh, an official proof of residency. So you will need that. You'll need your social security number. You also need uh, a color copy of your passport, a color copy of your driver's license, and also if you have a permanent resident card, you'll need that. Um, one interesting fact, and we're going to go into this uh, a little bit later, and I think you know, make sure you do have that permanent resident card. 
uh, it will help you save on your taxes uh, when we go to sell. You have to pull what's called a certificate of no lien and that is to make sure that there are no liens that are on the property and we can check that easily online if we have all of your documentation. What slower, sorry this is not in the questions either, but I know as an assistant of yours I've seen that there's a lot of times where the process is a little bit slower than usual. What is like the thing you most need? That's the fidio comiso to get everything it, it's started. A fide, right? it's, it's the fidi comiso. We belong to what's called the MLS system, Multiple Listing Service. Mm -hmm. And in order to list our properties on MLS, there are certain documentation that we need just to prove legal mm -hmm. ownership of that property. And the main one is a full copy of the Fidi Comisio. So you bring it to our office, we'll copy it, we'll have it on file, and then we can start the uh, research process from there. Okay, good. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. All right, we'll go to the next question. How is the market value determined in real estate market here in Rocky Point? Uh, that's a very good question. We have several different markets. Uh, you have the resort areas such as Sandy Beach. So let's take that for instance. And then within that area, you have the individual resorts themselves. So we'll take a look at what the sales comps have been for the, uh, a particular resort. Okay. Um, could be one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. We'll compare it against those. Uh, we also look at what the list, uh, the list to sales price ratio, what, what is that difference between what it listed at and what it sold at. Okay. Uh, and then also all of the amenities or upgrades that are within that, that unit or that home. If we were to do a home, we wouldn't use a uh, resort comparison. We would use similar homes in let's say Las Conchas or Choya Bay. So it's called a, uh, a competitive uh, market analysis, CMA, and your agent should be able to provide that to you. That's gonna give you a, um, uh, a rough estimate of where we think we're gonna make a recommendation, but ultimately it's up to the, the seller to decide where to list the house. Okay, perfect. All right, can you explain me in detail how an LLC would work here in Rocky Point? That is a, a me question because I am familiar with LLC, but being quite young, I need to be more um, informative. Somewhere. Yeah, so an LLC is a limited liability corporation. Mm -hmm. um, I consider an Arizona LLC corporation probably to be the easiest. It's the easiest to set up and it's the easiest to maintain. Essentially, in having, uh, instead of having an individual like yourself, you would be the managing member. You could be a 100% managing member, or uh, you could go into it with your boyfriend or husband or significant other, and uh, they may own another 50% of that. You'll have an operating agreement. All LLC should have an operating agreement. That operating agreement has specific language uh, tailored to the Mexico market. Uh, may have language saying that uh, it's meant for rental purposes in Puerto Penasco. One of the benefits right now is that we can avoid a capital gains tax situation. The other uh, uh, benefit is the uh, transfer tax, a 2% transfer tax we don't have to pay because there's no change in membership. The last benefit is that we can, we can close the property in about four to six weeks, whereas if we were to do a uh, traditional close with the bank trust, uh, right now it's taking more than 90 days to close. So That's rough. So uh, there are benefits and there are downfalls, um, so you, you're going to want to talk to your agent about about those. Well, can I talk to my broker? <laughs> <laughs> or the broker. Yeah, have, she can talk to the broker. <laughs> no, but if I'm selling, I'm going to probably ask them questions every 1.2 seconds. But anyways, I know yeah. he'll answer them. I um, will answer it always. <laughs> but uh, I have like a question for a client that doesn't have an LLC buying and purchasing a property that does have an LLC for like 10 years. Like what happens? Does he have to pay the tax or she or... Is it like not convenient? Well, um, there, there's two questions that, she, that she's asking. Um, if you don't, the property's not in an LLC, you have to form one. And in that case, you would have to go through the normal close process. You would have to pay the transfer tax. The seller would have to pay the capital gains tax. 
so if you want to avoid all of that, you find one that's already established. Um, and as far as the second question is, is the trust and the LLC are already established, uh, that property, its cost basis is going to be recorded at the time that the LLC was formed. Okay. So, um, you know, 10 years ago, uh, it would have been maybe $100,000. Now it's worth 300000 If that new owner should ever take out, take, take the property out or change the beneficiary of the trust, uh, they would be uh, liable for the capital gains tax from the point at which it was recorded. Uh, so there could be a potential capital, large potential capital gains tax liability. So don't take it out of an LLC. Okay. Don't so change just, it. Just look for a home that. Don't change the name. Oh, not okay. Just don't, not don't, change. If it's already in an LLC, don't change the name. Okay. Yeah. Good. So here we go with the taxes. How do taxes work here um, with buyer and seller and closing cost disclosure? Yeah, so as part of disclosure, you, you receive what's called a settlement statement, uh, estimate of your closing costs, and that's during your inspection period. Mm -hmm. And the closing coordinator will um, calculate whatever your closing costs are. And one of those is the uh, tax liability. And you'll see a line item uh, usually at the top of what the transfer tax is uh, that the buyer is liable for. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be 2% of the uh, purchase price. It's actually going to be 2% of the purchase price or 2% of the appraised value or 2% of the city valuation. Uh, whichever one is the highest. Usually they're all in line. You'll see a, uh, an appraisal fee that's paid by the buyer uh, and that appraisal fee to appraise the property, find its valuation according to the appraiser. Usually it's going to match the purchase price and then there'll be a 2% tax on that, on, on that valuation. Where people are getting caught now is 10 years ago the peso to dollar exchange rate was 10 to 1 and now it's 20 to 1. It's a huge difference. It's a huge <clears throat> difference. The uh, recorded price is in pesos. So at the time that it's recorded, if it was 20 to 1 at $100,000, it would be 1 million. And if you sold it at $100,000 at 20 to 1, it would be 2 million. So you have a million, uh, million peso gain and you'd be taxed on that. There are ways to get it down, uh, so we shop it around to various notarios to help you do that. Yeah. No one else can do it except for the notario. Yeah, you gotta keep it professional. Anyways, last question. Uh oh. The best one. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having fun, but I know we gotta keep this short. Yes, we do, because then I work longer editing it. <laughs> but um, what advice would you give me as a future agent? You want me to answer that truthfully? Truthfully, yes, the truth. Don't give up your day job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, 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 way, the way Jolene and I met is she, she was our waitress at Capone's and she was pulling down $500 a week and, uh, and she quit. I know. But she had, she had other opportunities and uh, she, had, she, she wanted to move on. And, uh, but getting started is, is very difficult. It but is. one of the nice things, and this is my recommendation, you're better off here than you are in, in many other places because you can specialize in a resort area. I don't consider it a sales job. I consider it a, a lifestyle. A, it's a lifestyle. You're selling a lifestyle. You're providing families with memories and you're providing um, family get-togethers and uh, enjoyment. That's one of the unique advantages that you have when you're marketing yourself. Um, you specialize in resort areas and what, what we like to say is uh, bringing family and friends together and that's really the way that we look at it. So my advice is, is learn everything you can, uh, hook up with a, uh, an experienced broker, whoever that might be, be part of a team be part of a team yeah, very important. Uh, and uh, uh, learn, learn as much as you can and specialize in a certain area. What most brought my attention is like just bringing clients to, you know, I've been here my whole life. I was raised here. Just like every single Mexican. She has. 
I'll bring them to every single Mexican place that they would never know about, like yeah. little tiny houses. So just make sure you actually know the right culture. And yeah, there's so much to do here. So. There's so much to do and learn. And uh, we're very appreciative to have, have um, Jolene here. And again, uh, please send us your questions. We'd be more than happy to answer them. We, uh, Jolene is, is forcing me to do this on a, I've been wanting to do it. Yeah. He uh, but has. but she is uh, she's facilitating the uh, the production. So I want to thank you very much no, for that. No, thank you for just and, joining and me. You're it's, earning it's really your fun. keep. <laughs> thank you. No, yeah, guys. Any other questions you have? They will be recorded oh. next week. Every Thursday we'll this. answer the questions. Sorry, guys. Green Bay Packers. <laughs> we'll zoom that in. We do have a lot of people from uh, the Midwest. So. No. All right. Thanks okay. a lot. Bye. Right, bye, guys. Bye.